Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. And a very warm welcome to Saturday's edition of the DC Universe Daily. On today's show, we're asking, can we trust James Gunn with DC? Is he creating a brave brand new DC Universe or is he just picking up where Walter Hamada left off? I feel it's a little bit of both. There's uh, no question about that in my mind. Since James Gunn and Peter Saffron have taken over, the, the question has been, what the hell is going on here? Full reboot, semi-reboot, or just continuing what exists? Well, it's pretty clear now that we know we're getting a younger Superman that we're not just going to continue the old DCEU. The old DCEU, as it was, is gone. It will never be the same again. But we do have four movies from that universe this year. And that will be the end. How do you have a brand new younger Superman if you're going to have elements of the old DCEU in the new DC universe? And um, that's a question people are asking. Um, why are we getting a younger Superman? And how much younger will this Superman be from Henry Cavill's age. Well, we could be getting a different character here. We could be getting John Kent. In the comics, John Kent becomes Superboy. In a recent graphic novel, uh, we saw that Superman goes off to space and John Kent takes on the mantle of Superman. That could be what we're actually getting here. Now, nobody can be sure if this is what James Gunn is doing, but it wouldn't surprise me with the hint of him saying he's looking to cast a much younger Superman. So we could be going with Superboy John Kent, or he could at least be involved. Superman could still be around. Now, that would be interesting if we've got an older Superman and a John Kent. Would they recast the older Superman? Um, that that's that's an interesting situation that something we'll have to wait for. James Gunn said he has had discussions with Henry Cavill as he has with other actual you know actual existing DC actors about doing something else in the new DC universe. So could Henry Cavill play the older Superman and then we've got a John Kent Superboy which will it be mainly focused on. So I do feel we're going for younger characters in the DC Universe. I do feel Momoa will be gone after Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom as Aquaman. And I think the only reason for this can be he's looking to recast the Justice League with a younger cast. Or, or as I just said about Superman, is it that we're getting a young Justice situation here? Something I've spoken about before. But how does this all work in the current setup? The current setup is the DCEU. We know that Walter Hamada was going to do Flashpoint. We're getting the Flash movie. They were going to leap into a new timeline after Barry comes back and fixes Flashpoint. I believe that kind of thing is still happening. Now, how James Gunn creates a brand new timeline, I'm not too sure. We don't know if he's going to use this movie or if he's going to use some other element of the multiverse to pretty much create a multiversal brand new DC universe. Yes, I do feel we're going to keep on the multiverse strategy. I don't think we're going away from the multiverse strategy. So that would be interesting because with the multiverse, pretty much everything can remain canon. Henry Cavill's Superman can still be out there somewhere. So you could either pull in multiversal elements into the existing DCEU, which is now going to be DC Universe. You could do that or you could do what Hamada was going to do, which is create a new timeline by messing around with time in the Flash movie. And so that's going to be an interesting thing as well, isn't it? Because... What happens in these movies? Do, do, do these movies matter? A question we've also asked multiple times before. 
At first, I didn't think they did. I thought he was going to do a fresh reboot. But with everything he said, especially saying, I'm going to keep the things that work and fix the things that don't, what I think that means is, is get rid of the things that don't and keep the things he feels as a creative actually already work. And there's loads of opinions on this right now. There's some people who would never recast Superman and keep Henry Cavill as Superman. Clearly, James Gunn is being very economical with the truth and he's not completely showing his hand. So new timeline, probably a younger Justice League. Maybe like the Young Justice animated series, which I've got a lot of time for. I really do like that. I think something along those lines is happening. There's no question, this is a man who read the comics as a young boy and a young man. This is a creative, whatever you think about him, in any facet, who understands comics. He understands Marvel comics. He understands DC comics, right? He's even very, very knowledgeable with Looney Tunes as well, which is a different universe of course, and he's going to be delving into the Looney Tunes stuff as well. So he's going to be doing other universes as well for WB. James Gunn has a very juvenile storytelling kind of mind. The way he tells stories, he tells them maybe for younger people. That's why younger people stand James Gunn as a writer, director as well. So Young Justice, multiverse strategy, new timeline. I think that's where we're going here. Younger Superman, younger Batman, maybe even we're going with the Aqualad thing. So if you're going Young Justice, that means the older versions of these characters still exist. So if we're getting a younger Wonder Woman or a different version of Wonder Woman that's younger, because there is a version of that in the comics, if I remember rightly, I can't remember her name, somebody jot down her name in the comics. Help a guy out who doesn't know everything. And not knowing everything doesn't make you a bad fan. It just makes you fucking honest. Right? So I feel this is the way we're going. So, you know, using some elements that exist within the established canon of the DCEU. Replacing others by pretty much using the multiverse. That's how I feel uh, this could play out. Of course, there's another way of doing recast, just start, just recasting and not giving a narrative reason why you recast. There was no narrative reason why Val Kilmer was Bruce Wayne and Michael Keaton wasn't. There was no narrative storytelling around George Clooney replacing Val Kilmer. And that was all set in the same universe. You know, Gordon, Commissioner Gordon was still played by the same actor. It was still the same world, but there was no explanation because that's not how they did things back then but i think with the way how knowledgeable us fans are i think there will be a narrative storytelling reason why this is happening and a multiversal brand new timeline is a great way of doing it just pulling different facets of different versions of the multiverse and i think the multiverse is definitely a thing. Now, when he made one of his big threats, he spoke about the multiverse very briefly. He said, we welcome all fans to the multiverse. So that tells you something. That is the biggest hint of all. So I do believe this is where we're going with this. So James Gunn kind of is creating a brand new, brave new DC universe, but trying to marry what he feels already works. So he's not getting the sledgehammer and knocking it all down. He has kind of promoted Blue Beetle as well. So I would imagine that Blue Beetle will remain. We'll have to wait and see about that. Of course, these are just theories because we don't know. But it does seem to me that a multiverse strategy is the best way around all of this. So I, he did work very closely with Walter Amada, James Gunn, as has Peter Saffron. So in a lot of ways, even though they're in charge now, they were already there. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. 
because Walter Hamada was going to get rid of Henry Cavill as Superman. So James Gunn, in that facet, is continuing the work of Walter Hamada. There's no question about that. So I feel this is how we're going to proceed in the new DC Universe. And at the end of the day, as I've already said, in the, in, you know, in the question of can we trust James Gunn to, with DC, you know, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. We're going to have to wait and see. There's a lot of people who just want to, you know, say, oh, it's not going to work. It's going to flop. This is bad. There's people who are invested in the original cast and the original setup of the DCEU set up by Zack Snyder. So they're in that world and they want that world to continue. They don't care that it wasn't successful enough for the company. They don't care. They know what they want and they want what they want. They were excited by Black Adam. They were excited by Cavill being back as Superman. They're angry, understandably, that Cavill is no longer Superman. They're angry with the way Cavill was treated. It wasn't a nice way to treat someone, but if you want to be treated with respect, and nicely, the entertainment industry isn't the place to be. People who consume the entertainment industry wrongly believe that the entertainment industry is run on morality and goodness. They believe the BTS features on their Blu-ray 4Ks or DVDs. It isn't really like that. They're not a family. They don't like each other. They're a business. They're doing a job. And then it's on to the next job. That's how this industry works. It doesn't have to be kind. It doesn't have to be compassionate for you. You just have to consume the stuff that they make. Just like you don't ask any questions on who made your clothes and how they were made, right? It's the same with the entertainment industry. So I don't know why some people hold the entertainment industry and actors and producers and, direct and directors to higher ideals. They're no different to any other corrupt big business. Don't really care about any of that. All I care about is consuming great entertainment. And I want DC to be great. Now, James Gunn and Peter Saffron are really threading the aisle of the needle here. We're trying to keep some stuff that they feel works, but bring in new elements and they're certainly going to do that but it's not a fresh take but it's going to be completely different and so how they marry the old with the new is going to be very interesting now we know how Walter Hamada was going to do it we were going to have Batgirl we were going to have Sasha Calais Flashpoint Supergirl part of this new timeline just like that they were going to be there because Barry messed with time and Michael Keaton was going to be the DCEU Batman. I don't think for a long time, but temporarily until Barbara Gordon would take up his mantle in Gotham City. And Blue Beetle was coming in and it was going to be kind of a lot of younger new characters in this. And you would still have older statesmen like Ezra Miller's The Flash and Zachary Levi's Shazam. And we, I don't know what they, what, I, I don't know what they were going to do with certain characters, but I think that's the kind of way Walter Hamada was going with it. And that leadership felt that DC would be better served to be more present on HBO Max rather than cinematically, because most of the projects were going to be released via the arm of HBO Max. Now, Zaslav and his new people are reversing those decisions, focusing on the movie theater, on the cin cinematic DC universe. There'll be some stuff on HBO Max exclusively, of course. So we were gonna get Batgirl on HBO Max, we were gonna get Blue Beetle on HBO Max. Zaslav shelved Batgirl and reversed that decision and put decided to put Blue Beetle on the movie screen in movie theatres. I think at least one of those decisions was the right one in terms of Blue Beetle. The questions will continue of James Gunn. The civil war between fans will continue um, until these um, announcements are made and you're not going to be told the whole picture yet. They haven't been there long enough to give you the big, the big, pic the big picture and tell you everything. And I'll tell you why they're not going to tell you everything because they want to see 
how the first chapter does. So if the first chapter doesn't resonate with audiences and the box office isn't there, they're going to have to make changes by God. You know, Gunn and Saffron may be removed for failing David Sassler. So we're going to have to wait and see. We're going to have to see how this progresses. But very soon we're going to find out. But don't expect the sledgehammer to knock everything down and start again. You're going to be upset that some versions of the DCEU exist while well, Henry Cavill and The Rock are no longer there. But that is, you know, that is the shape of the beast. The DCEU has never made the money any previous leaderships wanted. Now they're trying to create something that people want to come and watch. And it's very difficult right now because I think we're moving away from the peak of comic book movies as well. So there's that challenge. But I think if you make good shit, people will want to consume it. It's as simple as that. This has been Saturday's edition of the DC Universe Daily with me, Mick, your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wives. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you never miss this beautiful perfection. And I'll see you again in the next video. Until I see you again, goodbye, au revoir, au revoir.